Uh, starting now, we all know the pressures on the NHS, but shock figures have revealed the number of patients scrabbling for appointments has rocketed to over 2,000 per GP, the highest ever level. Now, this is due to a combination of a rising number of patients and a declining number of doctors. So struggling to get an appointment is becoming an all-too-familiar thing. And so many people talk about it, Denise, you mentioned yeah. it on here all the time, like, well, yeah. if you can get an appointment, well, if I you know. can even get to talk <clears throat> to somebody. Well, yeah, and I was, you know, today um, complaining like everybody else. I've always really championed my GP surgery. It was always, you were always available to get an appointment, even on the day if something was a little bit more serious. And I'm not saying that that can't still happen, but accessing those appointments has become impossible. We used to be able to ring up at a certain time, which was fine, and allocated a couple of hours, morning and night, and get your appointment. Now it's all online. And I cannot do the online form. And I just think we were talking earlier about there are so you're many quite, people older than us. You're quite I mean, I don't like family, an online but... form, but I can usually manoeuvre my way through it. It's nearly impossible. And I honestly have been to a private GP because I just couldn't work it out. But on the other side of the coin, I spoke to a friend of mine who's a GP in, um, in, in Cheshire today. And she's not my GP, she's a friend. And she said that they had a practice managers meeting this week and they were on level 10 for the first time in years, which means means that they are at full capacity. She said that they, their whole time is spending dealing with people with complex needs that should be dealt with with specialists and surgeons. So, for example, to see a gastroenterologist, there's now a year waiting list for a referral. For a neurosurgeon, a year and a half. And for a gynaecologist, there is a two-year referral unless they are sent as an emergency in an ambulance. And so they are, for the first time ever, telling people, advising people that if they can afford it, to go private. Like we said. Mm. Well, that, you know, you do... It makes you wonder if that's where this is leading. I but eventually, like they go, if you can afford it, some can, you're lucky if you can, that eventually you go, well, I'm just so frustrated waiting, I'll just pay. Yeah. Well, I feel, cos, unlike Denise, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Nor am I, <laughs> <laughs> um, But actually, to be fair, we were talking about it today, weren't we? And I was saying, because they've been banging on and we've all been against privatising the NHS and all that, for years it's always been a political debate. And just lately I thought, are they trying to force this on us? Are they trying to make it so bad that we almost go, OK, let's privatise it because it doesn't work anymore? Mm. That's what I feel like they're doing. We're being forced into it. And I have to say that... I never, ever, ever blame the GPs because I think they do an amazing job. And, and who I think would want to go in so, and train for this? They wouldn't want to go in and train. They do an amazing job. And the last time I did see a GP, which was years ago, because um, I can't get to see one anymore, um, he, he actually said to me, we, get, we, get, we have to see between 30 and 40 patients a day. We get a maximum of 15 minutes, but five if we can. So we can't get involved. And people coming with mental health issues I'm literally going, OK, take that, take that, because I haven't got time to, issues. to sit down and talk to also, them. Also, there does seem a, a bit of a postcode lottery, Janet, as well. You know. I know. It depends on what part of the country you're living in, because, obviously, in uh, middle-class and more well-off areas, uh, the number of patients to the GP is, is much lower, but it's in the deprived areas where people's health... Uh, you, you know, tends to suffer for, you know, lack of money, poor diet and all sorts of reasons, where there, there are 3,000 patients per oh, GP. Doctor. And most GPs, the majority of GPs now, are working part-time. They're only working three days a week. Why? So, Why is well, that? that goes back to their pay settlement, their pension agreements and all sorts of things that happened, you know, under a previous government a long time ago. But this problem has been building since COVID and getting worse and worse. But if you, like, I agree with uh, Denise and Colleen, when I look at my GP's website, and I've edited a national newspaper online, so I'm pretty tech savvy, I uh, look at my GP's website and it's utterly confusing. Yeah. It's got all these boxes, do you want this, do you want that? Yeah. 
And what it says right across it is COVID. It's as if COVID has never gone Still, away. They should, she said they'll never recover from COVID because it became yeah. a one-stop shop for COVID. Everything and who's did, reading the whole that, NHS Janet? Yeah. That's the thing. You well, fill an yeah. online form with all your personal details. And, and the then the I think who's reading it? The receptionist is reading it. And also, I stand outside that surgery that sits on the edge of the supermarket car park and they extended the surgery, so it's a really big new building and it's empty. And there's on the door, it says, do not enter unless you have an appointment. But well, you the, um... made a good point earlier when you said that there are certain things like blood tests that could be handed over to pharmacists who are yes. highly qualified mm. rather than have to make an appointment well, you know, to go back to the, in the day, blood back test. in the day, you wanted to, uh, you know, when I, when I uh, my GP was in Yorkshire, if I had a blood test, it was a relatively easy thing to do. You could just turn up. Now you've got to book an appointment just as complicated as getting a GP. Peace appointment. What I don't understand is, given the crisis we're in, why more isn't devolved to pharmacists? And you know, because there are big pharmacists now who are extremely good in all our major supermarket chains. A lot of the things we need to do at doctors could have been done there, and the government said that they were going to do that, but that doesn't seem to have happened. But in the meantime, I can't help agreeing with you that this is privatisation it is. by the back door. And the people well, who suffer will be the people who can't afford yeah, it. Yeah, uh, lots of you getting in touch. Thank you very much. We'd love to hear from you. Nikki said, after months of never getting a face-to-face -face appointment, and I have a history of other health conditions, I resorted to a private appointment and had a, an MRI privately. Uh, Liz says, I needed an emergency appointment due to asthma and breathing issues. This used to be classed as urgent, but my GP surgery said... Quotes, they didn't have the capacity and said to call 111. However, I have to say, we were saying sometimes it can be a bit of a postcode yeah. lottery. Janine says, um, I've never had a problem getting an appointment or operation all the way through the pandemic with my GP practice or my local hospital. I have lots of health issues. Since COVID, they've brought in e consultations as well, which I find very helpful. And also, Francis in Cornwall, I've never had any problem. Our lovely GP practice um, had telephone consultations, then face to face appointments all through the pandemic, and now it's back to normal great service so it does depend yeah, where you are it, do, it does there uh, are we also have more had... gps taking their own life than ever before and nobody's talking well, about that well either. no that's a big yeah. subject um and that's terribly sad to hear um the national health been in touch and sent us this a spokesperson said gps Teams are delivering record numbers of appointments across the country with 341.6 million appointments in the past year. And although there are recruitment challenges in some areas of the country, the NHS has expanded a scheme that's in place to incentivise doctors to complete their training in areas where recruitment has historically been low. The NHS also recruited an additional 21,000 staff since March 2019. But they're, um, not but they're yeah. not doctors. They're actually in the Tories in their election, election manifesto promised us six thousand more GPs oh, yeah. and the opposite. Has and remember the money they spent on the nightingales. We haven't got enough doctors to keep us going anyway. Who was ever going to stop those white elephants? <laughs> oh, don't get me started. <laughs> don't set her off. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much for getting in touch. We asked you to take part in our poll as well. Do you struggle to get an appointment with your GP? 66% of you say yes, you do. 34 say no. Thanks very much for taking part.